Hi there. Um, oh, we've gone too far. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, Anne and NATO for getting me out here. Uh, it's great to be speaking. Uh, it was great to hear Trevor. In fact, my talk's going to dovetail into his um, neatly, I hope. Um, I did a, a project in Afghanistan last year, but um, to give that a little bit more context, I just wanted to talk about two works that I've done in the last few years. Uh, for some reason, it's not playing the first uh, work, but anyway, I'll talk about this one. Um, this was a, a work... Um, ah, this is Trevor's work. <laughs> Which is great work, by the way. I wouldn't mind owning it. So, um, this is a work that I did in 2000 called Storm Sequence. It's a good I illustration of my interest in a kind of performative landscape, uh, a performance that speaks directly to that landscape and somehow responds. So, uh, it was my kind of punk version of a sort of uh, romantic, love, sublime landscape. Um, but of course, the, the the landscape, the weather, had to be as important as the skateboarding performance. Um, for me. And the next work I did in uh, 2007, it's called Apologies. Uh, it's also an illustration of uh, a kind of, uh, kind of response to the immediate environment in which the performance is taking place. And um, the difference between the last example and this one, I would hope, is that this can potentially be read in, in relation to Australian domestic um, uh, environmental and possibly even indigenous politics. So there's a bit of a change, uh, a shift in my work between those two works. Um, and the next work is a different kind of desert. I was invited uh, last year by the Australian War Memorial to work in Afghanistan and um, it was a bit of a daunting thought because I am a pacifist and um, going to a war zone uh, was something that I really had to consider. And um, being embedded also, I knew, was kind of code for being edited. And I, I really knew I had to kind of negotiate some difficult terrain in more ways than one. So um, I did uh, a kind of uh, a tour of the country. Um, I decided to go, uh, of course, but uh, I, I knew that um, I was going to be kind of limited in what I could see. And um, thinking th through Trevor's um, work, it all became about sort of the possibility of vision for me, um, this project. Um, I spent a lot of time in southern Afghanistan with, um, with the military. I'm interested in what was happening in Afghanistan in general. It was a very different project for me, but I was having to work with the military, so I was kind of inside the machine. Um, and uh, I did spend some time in uh, the, a zone of Afghanistan sort of really uh, involved in quite a lot of conflict at the moment. It's the Orizgan province in the uh, south. And I did a project uh, in a small base called Camp Holland uh, near a, a town called Tarankot. And um, it was a very... I just have time to talk about one project. I've only got eight minutes. Um, Trevor had 15, so... Look. I have to kind of speak a bit quicker here. Um, I asked two soldiers to record each other with handy cams. So I didn't want to really produce a work myself. I was kind of more involved in running a sort of video and performance workshop for combat soldiers, which was a pretty tough gig. Um, but uh, they were surprisingly open to the idea. So I, I um, asked them to sort of devise a kind of movement game with me. And this movement game initially just involved them mirroring each other's movements. So uh, one soldier would, would sort of initiate a move, the other would follow. But pretty soon this movement game became more complex. One soldier would then start to kind of bluff the other soldier using erratic movements and whatever. And um, so pretty soon this kind of video experiment turned into a game of deception for one soldier and a kind of psychoneuromuscular anticipation uh, or response uh, by the other soldier. Uh, it, it sort of became increasingly more tense as the, as the video unfolds. And also, uh, there was a few other factors that in, contributed to that. One was um, I asked the soldiers not to look at each other directly, but through the viewfinder of the camera. So at all times, their vision was um, mediated. Um, I, I was also interested in them kind of moving in this kind of circular fashion. 
And it was kind of a sneaky way for me to um, survey this base, which you can kind of see in the background of the, the image on the, uh, the, the, the guy you can actually see on the right there. Um, uh, it's a quite a large military installation. Um, so really the video gives you a kind of 360 degree panoptical view of that, of that location. Um, and the reason why I wanted to sort of show the environment was because, surprise, surprise, it didn't exist on any map. This is, this is Google Earth, and there's the township of Tarancot that I mentioned, and the military base should take up quite a big uh, sort of area of this desert environment here. So um, I was interested in researching the region after the fact, and I've sort of, sort of really got a better idea of what was taking there through uh, the Afghan war diaries that were, were leaked uh, recently on WikiLeaks. And this is actually um, the Guardian website that sort of geographically placed some of those key reports. This particular report happened pretty much right on the location that we were in for our video experiment. Uh, I just wanted to talk about this idea that I, I was thinking of other works before I started getting these guys to hang around recording each other. And this guy's work needs no introduction in this city. Dan, Dan Graham's sort of 72, 73 sort of intersubjective experiments. This one, Helix Spiral, um, Body Press. These works were sort of on my mind. And also this um, woman's films, Claire Denis, um, and this one, uh, Beau Trevet. This, uh, these two French um, legionnaires kind of stalking each other. Of course, there was a lot of... I'm not sure if anyone's seen this film, but there's quite a lot of sexual tension going on here, uh, which I wasn't sure was in my film. Um, but I just wanted to mention that the logic was, um, was there. And um, one thing that I asked these soldiers to do was to um, record things that were happening in this environment that we had kind of set up as a sort of makeshift reference. Yo, okay. Uh, um, uh, we, we, we did have a lot of these things flying around. It's a highly, the highly problematic um, technology of surveillance drones. Uh, and these soldiers would record that as they were kind of moving through their performance. Um, I kind of... I kind of pitched the performance to the soldiers in terms of a training exercise. I asked them to, to really read each other's movements um, and m we sort of made it increasingly difficult to do that. Um, it had to happen in a very specific place. If I, if I, I can't explain how sort of tight the location was. If I moved a bit further outside, there were um, small arms sort of fire threats and uh, IEDs, these bombs that are planted under the, you know, the, the, that are kind of killing a lot of people in that area, and the base was completely restricted in terms of filming. So, I see it as a kind of precious dance. The kind of, this is the music. Oh, oh. Um, it's a dance that became more and more difficult, and it happened in a, a place that we know as the uh, graveyard of empires. Thank you. <laughs> 